They have nothing to eat. Words, my friends in Christ, taken from today's gospel, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the gospel incident related today, we can see the compassion uh, that our blessed Lord had toward those who had some sort of a need. Now, those who followed our Lord obviously were attracted to him, were uh, fascinated by what he had to say. And so much so that they uh, forgot about the normal and the regular human needs that you would have, uh, such as eating. So our Lord performed an extraordinary miracle. Miracle, remember, is a suspension of the natural order, and that is done uh, by the authority and the power of God. So our Lord fed 4,000 with seven loaves and a few fishes. The modernist spin on this, and this is something one can't help uh, thinking about, I couldn't help thinking about yesterday, uh, going through the seminary and understanding what had become of it, and even reading the uh, accounts of uh, Bergoglio, uh, so-called Pope Francis, of his treatment of this. And the modernist treatment of the gospel account is, oh, well, um, what you have to understand is that our Lord didn't actually uh, multiply these loaves and fishes. Uh, there was... Uh, he so inspired people that they shared what they had, you see. So you didn't get, uh, you know, uh, loaves and fishes for 4,000. So they were so inspired after all these days that the bread that they had, they took out of their pockets, et cetera, and they shared with each other, you know, which raises the question, uh, what were they doing with the fish in their pockets for four days? <laughs> So, uh, but, you know, they take this sort of stuff seriously. And, and Bergoglio has said this a number of times, and it's pure heresy, and it's typical modernist stuff where they de-supernaturalize everything. Everything is the natural order, the natural order. But the Catholic understanding of this is what? Well, it's a proof of Christ's divinity. This was witnessed. He suspended the natural order of things, and he multiplied through divine power the loaves and the fishes. Right? It's one of the motives for credibility that our, our, our Lord uh, uh, performed miracles like this. And without the motives for uh, credibility, there's no reason to believe. There's no reason to, to uh, adhere to our Lord's doctrine. You know, it's uh, the, um, uh, one of the things I uh, used to say in the modern seminary is when they would do this, something like this, well, that if you uh, don't, if our Lord didn't do this, there's no reason to believe as a Catholic. You know, you might as well become an Anglican and at least you would get good music. Right. No confession and good music, Okay and uh, wouldn't make any difference what you did. But these are, are proofs of Christ's divinity and uh, proofs of uh, the authority that Christ gave to his church. So there's a, so that's one thing. The other consideration, there are a lot of considerations we can draw out of here. There is the symbolic lesson, uh, the hunger of soul that really can't be satisfied by anything except what uh, our blessed Lord uh, proposes and gives to us. And that is the possession of our Lord himself. Uh, the human heart has a desire to transcend itself. It has a desire for happiness. And experience shows that this cannot be satisfied merely by uh, earthly goods or earthly riches or honors or pleasures. The, 
experience will tell us that, well, sometimes if we say, if I acquire this or that particular thing, then I will be perfectly content. And uh, sure enough, um, that is not the case, that we will end up uh, either tiring of it or that we will seek another object for our contentment. So uh, experience tells us that. And uh, the, reason, uh, the reason for that is what uh, God has, has uh, put in the human heart. Now, the way of the world is, uh, the way of the world in dealing with this restlessness, this uh, desire for things, is that uh, it ups the ante all the time. Uh, it, 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 uh, you uh, in, uh, increase what you would end up desiring. And uh, you see that in the acquisitive society. You see that in uh, the, uh, the secular world, the pursuit of, of uh, uh, the pursuits of the men of, of power, uh, their pursuit of wealth and fame, and so on. But none of it ever ultimately satisfies. This comes up in a, uh, uh, another context as well. If you uh, take, for instance, alcoholism, the very interesting um, phenomenon about uh, alcoholism is uh, this, if you read the different medical studies of it, that uh, it's almost like a uh, pendulum, and uh, there is a, a, a feeling that a person has, say, of uh, contentment uh, that could be represented in the chart sort of in the middle, and then the uh, use of alcohol in this particular pleasure with people will move the dial temporarily to one side and then uh, it will come back to the center and then move to the other side, to the negative side. So the, the a positive idea of the pleasure and then the uh, negative side of it, uh, the a bit of regret perhaps that uh, starts to get into the alcoholic soul and then it becomes deeper and deeper. And the uh, doctors represent this as, as, as uh, a chart, and then it gets uh, extremely bad when it goes into the, into the negative uh, category. So one has to, uh, and there are ways, of course, it's not a hopeless situation of getting out of that, but uh, it's, it's uh, very difficult. People seek in alcohol what uh, we could call sort of a cheap a transcendence. In other words, that it, it, it uh, brings them uh, out of themselves to, uh, let's say, another state, but that's something uh, that is something that's only temporary, temporary and something which, with, um, uh, which eventually becomes sinful. And then uh, the same thing, of course, with, with drugs, the same, type, uh, the same type of scale. Or with impurity as well, that um, uh, you know, one, one sees... Uh, this as well, that uh, people become who are uh, really depraved and addicted to uh, certain types of uh, impurity, that they, they um, go from uh, one type to another uh, and find themselves ultimately never satisfied, seeking this sort of uh, cheap way of transcending themselves in, in, uh, in pleasure. So you... Uh, so there's this restlessness at, at the root of it. And the question is, why? Why? And why do people go off in, in these uh, awful directions? Well, first of all, the mind and heart of man are uh, unlimited, we could say, in their capacity to uh, seek out truth and to seek out goodness. So God has, has uh, made us this way to seek what is good and to transcend ourselves and ultimately to seek him. At the end of that, at the end of that, the uh, only unlimited truth and goodness is in God. And only that can ultimately satisfy us. And only that is, is uh, something that will fulfill uh, our purpose and fulfill our end and will satisfy the heart 
of men. And these, these uh, uh, other things um, are distractions from that ultimate truth and from that ultimate goal. St. Augustine, in, I think it's in his Confessions, said that um, our hearts are made for thee, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until we rest in thee. And that indeed is, is how God has uh, created us. Uh, when we um, confront these other distractions, we should uh, keep that in mind, that uh, God is our ultimate goal. He has created us uh, for him. He has put this desire into our hearts. This, as it were, this, this hunger. And uh, only our blessed Lord, uh, through the life of grace in our souls can give us the, the true bread that will satisfy us and ultimately will bring us to the, the banquet with him forever in heaven. Thank our blessed Lord for the Eucharist, which is a foretaste of that, and uh, ask him to give you the grace of uh, perseverance so that you are you only hunger for and you are only satisfied by him. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.